Well, welcome HFL 260 class to the last module of the semester before the final. Um, I wanted you to have an opportunity to uh, see a couple of examples and also answer some questions here on this recording for this this module. Um, you know, we talked an awful lot through the semesters and actually in other courses about the power of communicating information to you know um, the C-suite specifically um, you know and to others and dashboards have really come on you know into their own these days uh, one thing about our responsibilities as HFL professionals is that we deal with a lot of information coming at us from a lot of different places one of the most powerful tools we have at our disposal is our computerized maintenance management system um, along with our building automation systems and many of you um, use those on a daily basis some of you may have never used them but a lot of information goes into them and as we've talked about in the past the quality of that information the, his the historical data the breadth and the scope of the information if it's done well can be a very very powerful tool not just to communicate your activities but help you formulate decisions and prioritize what you're going to do next. Um, they can be used for so many things and sometimes and I made the mistake early in my career of not understanding how to use that data when communicating at a high level. In fact uh, at one point in time I was asked to give a high level presentation to the board of directors of the hospital and it was funny I actually did not understand clearly what a high-level presentation was. Um, you know, I was um, in my 20s. I was a young director. I had lots of information um, in my mind. Meeting with people at that level, I thought that um, they had, um, you know, obviously they're very intelligent folks and smart folks. And so, as an engineer in my training, I thought I needed to give them a little more detail. When in fact, high level meant less detail. It meant give them roll it up into something that is very digestible so they can quickly understand and see you know where you're going or maybe even make a decision and that's really the emphasis of this module the idea is to be able to start thinking about if you haven't already and start crafting how we can take data and we can turn that into a dashboard again a picture and that's saying a lot because at the big at, at the um beginning of this you really need to understand you know <clears throat> where you're going and beyond that you need to have a nice relationship or establish a relationship with your organizational leaders and leadership specifically the person you report to or the persons you report to and you want to get on the same page on what information is valuable to them and also communicate to them what information is meaningful to you so that you can kind of share and make a connection using information. Now, I'll warn you going into this, you know, some of this is going to be frustrating. Um, some of this is going to be, um, you know, uh, a little complex because I'm going to ask you to learn some things on the fly here. And I'm going to ask you to actually learn, um, in fact, a piece of software through a company we're going to talk about next. But but going forward, you you've got a you've got this four week module that I've given you a lot of latitude in terms of completion. In other words, it's all due pretty much four to five weeks from now. And so what that means is you need to time manage. Um, I think once you get the skill on this, uh, you'll be able to get it done fairly quickly. But getting that skill set going and working at it and kind of pounding at it, and maybe stepping away and coming back to it, I think is what you're going to need to do. Um, so I really encourage you to, you know, work through that front end, understand how the software works. There's lots of helps, lots of tutorials. This is also one of those moments where I do really want you to network and collaborate with each other. We have that open forum discussion board. I think this is a good time to use it. Ask each other questions, uh, maybe give each other calls. Um, I'm certainly here as a resource, but again, at the end of the day, I really want you to work with each other. And I really want you to um, use the resources that are at your disposal pretty much within the software system click data and the classroom. 
um, when we're doing this uh, this module. So let's move on to the next uh, next page here. Um, well, the next page, and, and again, this this is an example of one of your first assignments. You're going to be looking at energy from different um, states, and then you're going to compare that energy, residential and commercial, over a period of time, and show it in the form of a bar graph. You notice in the upper right-hand corner there is a symbol of click data. Well, that click data symbol um, is really, you know, designed to, um, you know, over here. This this click data symbol, that is the that's who you're going to be working through. There's a link that you can click on to to go to click data. It is a free sign up. Some of the limitations of click data are that um, you only have so much memory you can work with. And you have some really so much. Uh, I, th I think at one point they may have changed to um, how many different things you can do, but it's certainly there's there's enough data and there's enough space, if you will, to do it within the free subscription that you're going to sign up for. Um, again, this is one of those things where I do want you to work your way through using this piece of software. We we could do this in Excel and we could learn this in Excel. Excel does have some limitations. Um, but I wanted you to reach outside of your normal, I guess, Microsoft package. Use a proprietary piece of software to really get you to start thinking outside of what's in front of you and start looking out there for other tools that might make you uh, a more, uh, you know, increase your professional uh, growth um, outside of what you have in front of you. I think that's 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 something we always need to do in our profession. Um, and I know that even though I'm not um, I'm not advertising click data uh, interesting enough early on in the program I was looking around for several programs that might be able to do this I, I, I met I talked to the person on the phone they were pretty much in startup mode uh, they're still working at it they seem to be getting better uh, I think that they're making some good penetrations in the market here in the US uh, they were based in Asia previously I think India if I'm if I remember correctly but I, again, they, they are somebody that they have, I see kind of growing. I hope that we can continue to work with them. Um, they are very open to us, you know, obviously doing this as a college. And, um, and, and in any case, it's, it's good advertising, obviously, for them. But it also serves a purpose for us to grow and learn and to do this. So the first, the first assignment you're going to do is going to be this bar graph, and it's inside the module. The next assignment that you're going to do is going to be um, a histogram. So you're going to be doing uh, these histograms. So you're going to be comparing some energy bills. And these examples I'm giving you are student examples. One thing I want to tell you about these examples is, is that each one of you, you know, I want you to put your own fingerprint on it. Um, you know, I will grade you for format, for presentation, for clarity, for information that is being provided per the assignment. And then you get to sort of create it. And that's really what I'm looking for. You know, this is one of those creative opportunities. This is one of the things we're trying to create something that is visually clean, speaks and addresses, uh, if you will, the the information that's being provided, and giving you a point to be able to communicate with whoever it is you're delivering this information to. The next thing I do is you're going to be doing a pie graph, and um, and this pie graph you can see it's pretty busy again it is <clears throat> I'll give you the information to go into it this is a really good example of you know speaking to where the energy is in this building and how it's broken down um, again you get to design this and lay this out that you think effectively um, communicates again this is this is a really good one I mean you might just use the same format and, and develop it the same way um, but certainly you can use different, you know, fonting or, or different orientation or, um, you know, some people want to use maybe a three-dimensional um, type pie. That's okay. I think two-dimensional works better for this. However you think you see, visually see it as really being able to translate the information. And then what we're going to do is this is we're going to bring this kind of all together and I have some instructions in there for this. And we're going to come up with a graphic, our dashboard. So what we've done is each one of these we've developed different pieces that's going to go into the dashboard. And one of the things I wanted to point out on this is over here in the upper left hand corner is this narrative. This narrative over here, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to basically give a summary. And this is really important. 
even though you give images like this, these pictures, these nice images, it's important to be able to, um, you know, again, when you look at this, this, this one here is not great because you can't really read the text on this particular display. And this is more because of presentations or PowerPoint, not necessarily because of the dashboards themselves. However, you know, obviously you want everything to be clear on the dashboard. Um, but the other thing is too, is you want to be able to even take this information and you want to be able to create a summary, a nice one paragraph, maybe two at the most, or maybe just even a few sentences. And again, one of the phrases you want to keep in mind is brief, brilliant, and gone. In other words, give them enough information that they want you to come back for more or give them enough information. They know like, wow, this is really good. And I'd like to know more about what you're doing and don't be afraid to, you know, create different, um, you know, different add different things. In, in fact, on this assignment, we also have a little extra credit here. And over here, you have this gauge. This is part of the extra credit. I like gauges. They, they have their purpose. They don't work for everything, but gauges definitely have their purpose. And there are times where you can take gauges and you might just throw it in there. Maybe there's something that you want to measure for a year and you want to report monthly or maybe you're going to do it for a longer or shorter period of time and you can use a gauge to sort of um, you know give that um, a quick picture for it what I like about gauges is this you know when you see green and you kind of see it moving towards yellow and then back to red is again this is a nice way to communicate to administrator that you know maybe you're, you're going to tell, you're going to say to your manager you know I'm monitoring you know the amount the percentage of projects the amount of time my staff are spending doing projects in my department and you know through experience that once you hit 40% of time to projects, and again, that you're getting into the, the, the yellow red zone, and if you go 50%, you are in the red zone. And what that really means is your staffing is so thin and so dedicated to project work that you certainly cannot do the routine preventive maintenance and repair and stuff like that. So there needs to be a decision, and you already know what those decisions may have to be one you contract out projects two you maybe you hire more staff you know three you know you you release overtime you know there has to be some trigger and so when you see when you come to your ministry and say hey you know we're at 52 percent overtime starting to drift what do you you know help me decide what's which way do you want to go about this do i try to contract something out do i again do i do overtime and again you can see how this can be very proactive and how if you have this conversation ahead of time with your administrator um, or your reports, they, they're much more apt to go just say yes, do what you need to do, or here's what I recommend you do. It just opens up a nice dialogue for communication. And so you can create these gauges and, and you can kind of keep these and track these and monitor, especially when you're going into some kind of a transitional period. So at the end of the day, this, this is what you're gonna do at the end. You're gonna have yourself um, basically the, this, this dashboard and this is what you're going to submit. Now, I want to, again, warn you that even though I have these due towards the end of this whole section, you need to be working on these. And I would encourage you to submit them as you're completing them, um, not necessarily submit them all at the same time. I gave you the window at the end to submit three of the four in the one extra week for this dashboard. But submit them as you're getting them done. Stay on track. Um, you know, try not to do this all in one weekend. Um, I don't want you to be all frustrated at the end and then be, you know, drowning and asking for help. So get working on this early. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'm looking forward to, um, to seeing your work. And uh, like I said, all we have to do is just our final uh, assignment and we're done with this section. Uh, good job. And, um, and I hope that you, you enjoy uh, this effort.